Hello and welcome to Network News. We'll jump straight into the news as today, the 3rd of October, the Transport Secretary Louise Haig has officially opened Siemens' new £200 million train manufacturing plant in Goole in the east riding of Yorkshire close to Hull. She attended the opening along with the Mayor of London Sadiq Khan and TfL's Chief Commissioner Andy Lord as the factory will be used to manufacture 80% of the new trains being built for the Piccadilly line which is set to enter service next year increasing capacity, accessibility and comfort for passengers, including the use of air conditioning for the first ever time on the deep level tube. The factory itself is part of the broader Ghoul Rail Village, which covers 67 acres and includes the manufacturing facility, a components facility for maintenance of gearboxes and traction motors, the logistics centre warehousing facility and the Rays Business Centre, with Rays standing for the Rail Accelerator and Innovation Solutions Hub for Enterprise, whatever that means. The rail village has cost approximately £200 million and is expected to create another 1,000 jobs as well as supporting another 1,700 jobs in the broader supply chain. As well as the main opening, it was also announced today that Siemens intends to expand the rail village with a new £40 million bogey assembly and service centre which will manufacture bogies for new trains and be able to overhaul bogies from Siemens existing fleet of 3,224 vehicles already in service across the UK rail network. This would secure 100 existing jobs and create a further 200 jobs and is expected to be operational towards the end of 2026. Sambit Banerjee, the joint CEO at Siemens Mobility, said, After more than a decade of tremendous dedication and hard work, we have officially opened our state-of-the-art rail village in Goole, which is testament to our commitment to the north of England. None of this would have been possible without the brilliance, perseverance and passion of our people, and I'm incredibly proud of what we've achieved together. Looking ahead, Siemens say that all future train orders for the UK will be built in the factory, including the DeZero Verve, a fast charging battery train which they're hoping will be used to replace the ageing diesel trains used on our network, claiming that doing so could save £3.5 billion and 12 million tonnes of CO2 over the next 35 years. Further ahead, they've said the site is also gearing up to serve other global markets by 2030, potentially meaning we could see some trains being exported. Secretary of State for Transport Louise Haig has also vowed to deliver a long-term industrial strategy for rolling stock, saying this impressive world-class facility will be transformational to Goole and its people, providing a boost to the region's economy and supporting hundreds of skilled jobs. Its opening demonstrates the importance of high-quality, long-term investment to pave the way for employment and growth. I know how vital rail manufacturing is to our economy, which is why we will not sit on our hands when it comes to supporting it. For too long, the cycle of boom and bust has held back this sector. That's why I'm determined to put an end to this stop-start approach for investment and provide the industry with the certainty it needs to deliver a railway that is fit for the future. This comes following concerns earlier this year that Alstom's Litchurch Lane facility in Derby could close due to a lack of work, with the site only being saved at the last minute by an order for an additional 10 trains for the Elizabeth Line. As part of their visit here, the Mayor of London and TfL's Chief Commissioner also took the opportunity to lobby the government for further investment, with Andy Lord saying, We're working with Siemens Mobility, the Mayor of London and the government to ensure that the benefits from this project will continue through funding for new Bakerloo line trains to replace the existing fleet, which at more than 50 years old is the oldest operating daily passenger service anywhere in the UK. We look forward to welcoming the first new Piccadilly line trains to London later this year and for customers to start using them when they come into service from next year. This opening marks a historic moment in Britain's rolling stock production, with a new factory set to build nearly 100 new trains for the Piccadilly line, as well as potential future fleets for the Baker Loo line and mainline battery trains. Whilst obviously not as good as proper electrification, I think there will undeniably be a strong demand for battery trains over the next few years, so having the capacity to produce these domestically can only be a good thing. I do have some concerns about the market becoming oversaturated, however, as the events of the last year or so have shown that we can struggle to maintain two manufacturing plants, let alone a third. This is why I think it's good that the Transport Secretary has promised to set out a long-term rolling stock strategy. I also think it's good that Siemens plans to allow the site to serve other global markets, meaning the site ought to be more resilient should there be a lack of orders, preventing a future incident similar to the mess we saw earlier this year, where we weren't sure whether or not the factory in Derby would survive or not. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this multi-million pound facility in the comments below. Is this a wise investment for Siemens to be making in the future of the UK rail industry? Or an expensive gamble on an island which already has enough capacity for rolling stock production? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. 
subscribe to Network News for more updates like this, and until next time, thanks for watching.